Hello again. So this video is just a second example of a curve sketching problem because I know that learning how to put all of this information you know how to find now onto a graph can be really confusing. So we're just going to do another one together to give you another example of how to do it. So this time we're going to do x cubed plus 2x. Okay. So what we're going to do first again is find our y-intercepts. So I always like to find the y-intercept because it's always really easy to do because all you have to do is plug 0 into your function. So we're going to get 0 plus 0 here. So we know that we have our y-intercept at 0 comma 0. And then we're going to see if we can find our x-intercepts. Now if your x-intercepts are easy enough to solve for, go ahead and solve for them. But if the algebra is too complicated, it's okay. Don't worry about trying to find them. Move on to the calculus part. So if we set this equal to 0, and then we factor out an x, we get x times x squared plus 2. So this whole thing is going to equal 0 only when x equals 0, because x squared plus 2 equaling 0 has no solutions. So we don't have to worry about that one, which is kind of nice. So our x-intercept is only at 0, 0. So we know those po that one point, so we can put that on the graph. And then because it's a polynomial, we're not going to have any um, vertical or horizontal asymptotes, so we don't have to worry about that. And then since it's a polynomial, it's continuous everywhere, so we don't have to worry about any domain or range restrictions. So let's just get down to the calculus now. So let's find our first derivative. So this is easy enough to do because it's just power rule. So we're going to do 3x squared plus 2. And then we're going to um, set that equal to 0 and see what we get. So we get 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 2, or negative 2 is equal to 3x squared, which would mean that negative 2 thirds is equal to x squared, which again is going to have no solution. because. Um, we can never have x squared equaling a negative number. Nothing squared is ever going to equal a negative number unless you're working with the imaginary numbers, which we don't do that in this sort of calculus class. So we have no extrema. And now I want to see if we're increasing or decreasing. So because there are no critical values, it means that we're either always going to be increasing or, or always decreasing for this function. So let's just plug in an easy number like 0 into our first derivative and see what happens. So we're going to get 3 times 0 which is 0 plus 2 which is a positive number which means that we're increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity. And, and if you think about <coughs> excuse me, what uh, a cubic function normally looks like, your basic x cubed, it's increasing everywhere. So it kind of makes sense that we didn't have any extrema here. So now let's find our second derivative and see what happens. So again, this is pretty easy to do because it's power rule. So we're going to get 6x equaling um, your second derivative. When we set that equal to 0, it's pretty easy to see that our only critical value for the second derivative is going to be at x equaling 0. So now we can set up a sign chart and see what happens. So I'll put 0 on here and then pick some test values. So why don't we just do 1 and negative 1, because those are two pretty easy numbers to do. If we plug negative 1 into our second derivative, 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So we're going to be um, concave down to the left of 0. And we're going to be concave up when we plug in the 1, we'll get positive 6. And because we have a change in our concavity, going from negative here to positive in here, we also have an inflection point for this one. So we have a few more pieces of information to write up. So we know that we're concave up from 0 to positive infinity, and then we're concave down from negative infinity to 0, and then we have an inflection point at 0, which we knew the y value is already 0, because that's where our y-intercept was, and our x-intercept. Now, that's a lot of information to try to put on the graph when we only have one 
one point. So when that sort of thing happens, when you're not quite sure how to put all the information on because you don't have a lot of points to work with on the graph, because maybe you don't have any extrema or your inflection point was an intercept, just like this case was, just pick some x values and plug them into your function so you can get more um, dots on your picture because the more points you have for your picture, the easier it is to connect the dots and draw an accurate graph. So let's um, find what f of 1 is. So we plug in 1, we're going to get 1 cubed, so 1 plus 2 is going to be 3. So that's an easy point to put on here. Let's find maybe what f of negative 1 is as well. So when we plug in that, we're going to get negative 1 minus 2, so we're going to get negative 3. And since these look like they're drawn on a straight line, we might want to find two more points. So let's also find f of 2 and f of negative 2. So f of 2 is going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 2 times 2. So we're going to get 8 plus 4, which is 12. So that's going to go a little bit off of our picture. So that's going to be approximately up here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the negative. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8, and then 2 times negative 2 is um, negative 4. So here we're going to get minus 12. So we're right down here. And so we know that we're increasing everywhere and that we have an inflection point then. So from negative infinity to zero, we're concave down and increasing, which means that we're going something like this. Now it's hard to see because of the way I have the scale of the graph drawn. So maybe let's quick rearrange the scale of the graph. So we'll just erase all those points I did and we'll make this one and this two over here and this negative 1 and this negative 2. So if we quick put all those points back on the graph, so I'll have like a point up here and a point down here. So we, like we said, we were increasing and concave down. So it looks like we're probably doing something like this. And then at 0, we changed to concave up and increasing. So something like this maybe. So if something like that happens where you have something that's so steep and you want to make sure that um, show your professor or teacher, whoever, that you know what the concavity and then either the increasing and decreasing looks like together, you might want to exaggerate the curve a little bit. Or um, like I said, maybe zoom in on your scale and make there be more tick marks in between each consecutive integer, anything like that. So that's another example of a curve sketching problem. I hope this helped. Good luck with your, any of your homework and on any tests and quizzes. Have a great rest of your day.